In front of me is the 2021 Supra 2.0, a new four-cylinder turbo entry point into the Supra family. At $42,990, it's also a great deal less expensive versus the Supra 3.0 here on my right. Now with 255 horsepower and a whopping 295 pound-feet of torque, this has 50 more horsepower and an insane 150 more pound-feet of torque versus the Toyota 86 that's in Toyota's sports car lineup. Now for those of you who have owned or driven an 86 or BRZ and felt that the Supra 3.0 was a little bit out of your price range, today we're going to take an in-depth look at the Supra 2.0 and find out if this model could be a worthy replacement for that vehicle. So part three of our Supra, our 2021 Supra video, obviously we are back in the Supra 2.0, the four cylinder. And if you guys are probably better at doing burnouts than me, you could, this car does have enough power to actually do a little bit of a burnout, but the six cylinder is just so much easier in that regard. The one thing that you're wondering immediately is what is the price of this four cylinder model? Where does it fit in the lineup? Well, the Supra 2.0 starts at 42,500 bucks. It's about $8,000 less expensive than the six cylinder model, which is around $50,000. Toyota increased the price by the six by about 500 bucks. So not negligible, but still very reasonable. <laughs> this one here has the safety and technology package for like another 1500 bucks. So you're looking at around 44,000 with destination, which makes the Supra two liter with that package about $10,000 less than a comparably equipped three liter Supra premium with that package as well. And you are missing a couple of things in here. I don't have the wireless phone charger. I don't have an eight, uh, 14 way power seats with memory. Don't have heated seats in this car either. slightly better balance, there's less weight on the front. You can still have a blast driving this thing and it will outrun any 86. So if you guys have an 86 or B or Z and you're looking to trade up, the Supra 2.0 really fits in nicely there because at 42,000 for the base model, you know, obviously this is about 15 grand more than the base level of an 86 and FRS. So I was hoping this car would come in in the low 40 or just under $40,000. I imagine once, you know, Toyota dealers start discounting them, if this car, you know, being under 40 grand, it would be a really nice, you know, stepping point. You know, the Supra 3.0 is too expensive. This one at like 40 grand is reasonable. And when you look at the fact that the BMW counterpart, the Z4, is about $7,000 more expensive than this. So you do get some value with this car and it makes the Supra the 2021 model, a really enticing Japanese sports car option, especially if you're gonna compare it to a 370Z, because we all know how old the 370Z is. This still does not feel like a Japanese car. It drives, handles, and feels like a German car, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. We've got amazingly accurate steering, which is a little bit lighter in the two liter model. We've got a near perfect 50-50 weight distribution. We've got visibility that is still pretty atrocious in this car because you can't really see out of the, you know, the front windshield as much as this little skinny windshield and the view out of the back is terrible. Do I miss the fact that there's no manual? Yes, because I think for the four cylinder, a manual would be an enticing addition, especially for those of you who are coming from an 86 to this. This eight speed automatic is the ZF torque converter automatic, which is a good transmission, but I will say that the engine seems better suited to the six cylinder model. The four just doesn't really like to rev as much. It does have the nice pop pop though. <laughs> and zero to 60 in five seconds is plenty fast for most people. This will outsmoke, outrun, you know, things like a Volkswagen GTI. It'll outrun a Civic Type R still. Golf R might be quicker than this, th this car still though. But it's got so much torque. The engine has torque everywhere. 
So unlike the 86 that you may be currently driving, you have a turbocharger that's slapped onto a two liter four cylinder engine. Now that engine of course is based off of a Subaru design. This is the BMW B48 motor. So it's essentially the same turbocharged four cylinder that you're gonna find in your buddy's BMW 330i. And the application for the Supra it makes 255 horsepower and a stout 295 pound-feet of torque. So nearly 300 pound-feet of torque. This has considerably more torque versus the NA motor that you find in the 86 or the BRZ. Toyota says you'll get to 60 in around five seconds. And sorry for those of you who are looking for a manual, it's only available with an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's the good automatic though, it's built by ZF. Fuel economy hasn't been announced as of this filming, but you should know that the BMW engine in the Z4 gets around 24 in the city, 32 on the highway. Premium is probably the recommended spec. These are all rear wheel drive. And as this one sits, it weighs around 200 pounds less than the six cylinder version at 3,100 pounds. So compared to the 86, this is probably around three to 400 pounds heavier. Now in my weeks worth of testing, I was averaging around 23 MPG in this car, which came out to be about uh, two MPG better versus the six. Maybe it was three MPG. The six, the noise is so intoxicating that I find myself putting my foot to the floor all the time. But of course, you know, a Supra now ranges from low $40,000 to mid $50,000. Um, the A91 package is kind of the highest end of the Supra. Obviously, you know, some of you may be comparing this car to the mid-engine C8 Corvette, which I haven't had a chance to drive that car yet. Hopefully I get to drive it very soon. Um, that car starts at 59.9, but good luck trying to find one that's at 59.9. Most people are gonna spend between 70 to 80 grand on that vet. Add in the dealer markups and you're paying close to $100,000 on that thing, which is Porsche money. Uh, Supra still represents a huge value because now Toyota dealers are discounting them. Now, I'm not sure they're discounting on the 2021 models, but you can, I have seen Toyota dealers discount a, a 2020 model by as much as $5,000 off of stickers. So it makes the Supra a pretty enticing proposition at that point. And, once you kind of get past the fact that this car is all BMW, which is not really a bad thing, although it, it kind of shows that Toyota could have been a little bit more trying and putting more of their touch on this car. I mean, aside from the Toyota emblem in here and the JBL sound system, which doesn't sound all that good, they should have stolen the Harman Kardon speakers from the BMW Z4. Everything in here is BMW. The larger 8.8 inch screen, which is now standard, is iDrive 6.0. The steering wheel is BMW with a Toyota airbag cover on it. Um, this is basically BMW simplified, like it always has. The one thing I did notice is the windows, when you have them down, there's still a really bad buffeting, which is annoying. Toyota needs to hurry up and fix that by adding a, a little vortex generator on the side mirrors here, which you can add as an aftermarket feature. I've seen some aftermarket companies do that. the Supra, just like the 2020 model, when you have the windows down, both of them down, and you're going like 40 to 60 miles an hour, which is a speed that most people do on North American roads. You hear that drumming noise? That's just a bunch of wind buffeting because this car is missing some, some kind of generator, a vortex generator here on the side where windows to actually cue, quell that noise. To get rid of it, I actually have to close the passenger side window and just crack it leave it cracked and leave this all the way down, then it gets rid of the drumming. So Toyota, you need to hurry up and fix that. I was expecting them to fix it this year and sadly they have it. It almost makes this car undrivable because I like to drive this, my cars with the windows down on a nice day and you simply can't do it with both windows down unless you want to hear that drumming noise. But it seems like a pretty silly omission that Toyota should have done. In terms of the ride and handling for this car, the ride quality in the two liter actually feels a little bit more harsh than the three liter that I last drove because the three liter has the adaptive dampers that this car lacks. It's a little bit of a firm ride, but it's not, you know, un unbearable. <laughs> so much fun to drive, such a tossable car. And you're not gonna get in too much trouble in this thing like you would in the six cylinder. So the four cylinder is a welcome addition to the Supra lineup. I just hope cons Toyota considers a manual transmission for this model because it would really, really appease those enthusiasts that want one of these. And it's a little bit more attainable now. So in case 
you pull up to one of these 2021 Supras and think to yourself, should I be able to take them when the light turns green? Well, you'll be able to tell that this is the 2.0 model when you look at the wheels and tires. So that'll tell you if you should at the light. The Supra 2.0 has 18 inch wheels wrapped in two 55s in the front, two 75s in the rear. You will notice the tire has a little bit more sidewall because it's an inch smaller versus the Supra 3.0 models. To be honest, I actually like the way these wheels look on the four cylinder. The six cylinder wheels have kind of a more of an aftermarket look. The brakes are also downgraded for the four cylinder. You just have a smaller rotor by about an inch. They're 13 inches in diameter and the calipers are just a single piston floating design as opposed to the four piston fixed Brembo pots that you get with the six cylinder model. So you'll be able to tell a 2021 Supra 3.0 from the 2020 model when you look at the front brakes. They both came with Brembo front calipers. However, as you can see, the 2021 model has the Toyota Supra logo and script on the caliper, which I hear it's actually just a sticker. So the new Supra four cylinder has a polished exhaust tip. So it looks slightly different. You guys are probably wondering, how does it sound though? Very nice. I wasn't expecting the popping noises, but let's remind ourselves what the six sounds like. So compared to the four, the six has a brushed look to the exhaust, which makes it look, I think, a little bit nicer. Wow. I actually think the six sounds a little bit different for 2021. The exhaust is a little bit louder, a little bit crisper, and it definitely wins the sound test compared to the four. <laughs> it sounds so much better. <laughs> Oh, the way the six cylinder sings. I'm sorry, Toyota, but I will easily pay the extra $8,000 to go with the six over that four. That four cylinder is perfectly fine for the person who's not used to driving a rear drive sports car with lots of power. But that extra 130 horsepower really makes a difference. <laughs> and listen to that engine sing and the way it crackles and pops. This is the engine that was built for the Supra. I know it's not a Toyota engine, but BMW makes some of the best straight sixes in the business. <laughs> oh my God, what a car. Now this six cylinder model that I'm driving, basically a 3.0 premium with the safety tech upgrade package is around $55,000. $10,000 more expensive than the four cylinder, the red one. Does it feel worth that $10,000 premium? For me, absolutely. But for those of you who don't need the extra acceleration or don't mind the noise of the four cylinder, the six may sound a little expensive and it is a little more expensive. So with the new Supra 2.0 starting at around $43,000, it is about $8,000 less expensive versus the Supra 3.0. Now I'll be honest, I was expecting the Supra four cylinder model to come in at just under $40,000. $43,000 is pretty close, but keep in mind, however, this particular red one that I'm showing you here has a safety and technology upgrade package for around $3,500, which brings the total MSRP of this one here to right around $47,000 when you add in the destination charge. Now for comparison, the Supra 3.0 now starts at around $1,000 higher versus the 2020 model. It starts now at $50,990 for a base model. This one here is the premium, which is about $500 more expensive at $54,500. Add a safety uh, package for about $1,500, and you're looking at around $55,000. For those of you who want the ultimate 2021 Supra, Toyota is also offering the A91 edition, which has special wheels, a uh, special spoiler on the back, and it's available in two special colors. One is specific to the A91 package. That's around $57,000 or a few hundred dollars more expensive versus last year's launch edition model. At just under $60,000, the Supra still represents a really good deal if you guys are looking for a sports car. I know there's a lot of you are probably saying, oh, well, why don't I just buy a 2020 Chevrolet C8 Corvette for around $60,000? Well, my answer to that is good luck finding one of those for that price because with dealer markups and the fact that people tend to option up their Corvettes for a lot more money, 
you're gonna be paying closer to $80,000 for something like that. Now, coming back to the statement that I made earlier, is this car a worthy replacement or upgrade from your 86 or FRS? Well, if you guys can swing the $16,000 price difference between a base model 2020 86 and go for this model, I'd say it's definitely a worthy upgrade. It's got lots of torque, as you guys saw down low. While the engine doesn't make the best noises if you drive the six cylinder model, it does have a unique turbo noise. And because it's a BMW engine, you know there's gonna be a lot of tuning potential. So I am looking forward to seeing more of these on the road. So from what I've heard, Toyota engineers wanted this the four cylinder Supra because they expected a lot of tuners to pull out that B48 motor and replace it with a 2JZ motor, which is again, the motor that made the Supra famous for the previous generation. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my third and final part to the 2021 Supra. If you guys haven't seen my part two and part one video, be sure to click on the link in the description below where you can see uh, what I thought about these cars driving dynamics even further and the differences in styling. If you guys are also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.